first. Rob, you're up, baby. First off, are we even in the same weight class here? Like, come on, man. All right. Let me start off with a question. What is a Nobel-winning chemist, a biotech firm, and the University of Toronto have in common? They all use Google's DeepMind AI to synthesize liver drug cancer treatment in less than 30 days. Mind you, something that it took a bunch of humans more than 10 plus years to be able to even come close to. And why is that? Because AI has the ability to synthesize trillions of parameters in a fraction of a second. I find that fascinating, but you're over 30 seconds. John, you're up. I chose Wake Up by the Rage Against the Machine from Matrix soundtrack very intentionally and purposely to set the tone and framing of this fight is to wake up from a reactive to conscious mindset. This is going from cyber defense 2.0 to cyber defense 3.0. It's going from another level of posturing of cybersecurity. Rob, you got 15 seconds. I'm um, be honest, I didn't really understand what he said, but um, I will say this. When you go to, when, when you find somebody with a gun, I don't think you show up with your fists, right? You show up with a gun. So the reality is that if you're gonna fight AI, you gotta fight AI with AI, all right? Equal parts, in, equal parts innovation, equal parts governance. John, 15 seconds. So my stated position on this question is very simple. It's in using AI to train the mind and human intelligence of cybersecurity professionals. Because that is the only way to be proactive. What I just heard from you is being a reactive. Doesn't matter how much you detect, still be in a reactive mode. All right, back Garbage. and forth, you got 15 Garbage. seconds. Garbage. What's the definition of governance, right? You have humans that do what humans do well, and that's make the rules. But when it comes to enforcement, I'm going to pick a machine every day of the week. I'll pick iRobot over a human trying to figure out how to synthesize billions of telemetry parameters and make a decision every day. All right, all right. John? See, I'm all about the people. If we can use AI, for instance, threat hunting, the generative AI can generate hypothetical, realistic scenarios of hunting that can train humans instead of just being reacting. That is the only way to identify and protect way, way early on prevention side of the cycle instead of just react. Because using AI is using like a faster horse okay, no. in the modern warfare. Last rebuttal round, you got 15. I still don't understand what he's talking about. I'm be honest, all right? All I know is that in every platform that you talk about, all these security vendors that are even out here, what are they using? AI, okay, AI. They're using AI. So the, the, the reality is that as these platforms are being built, they're using the same technologies that you're all booing at. All right, all right, 15 seconds before we go to our refs. You're up, John. Strategy without tactics is the slowest route to victory. But tactics without strategy is a noise before defeat. All I hear from you is a noise, nothing but noise. That's okay, that's okay, that's, that's, that's good. He gave us 15 seconds. Now we're going to go to the refs who are going to keep you honest. And our first one is Robbie. Speak into the mic. I got to tell you, I think you should have used some AI to figure out that if you're going to hand out gifts, you should give them to the referees as well. Where are my socks? Okay, I heard threat hunting. Give me another specific use case I can use today to use AI in countering cyber threats. All right, John, you're going first. The threat hunting is the first because the protective mindset of cyber professional people are very limited with their imaginations. So, hey, using hey, AI is a knowledge hunting. purpose. Besides threat hunting. The second is a data protection. You know, going from a just access control to more idea analytics, to know what is the right people, the right access to right data to, for the right reason. And that's have, detecting all the behavioral changes for all the users having to do. All and right, third, that's good, 15 seconds. Rob? Compliance. Here's an easy one, regulatory. Imagine being in a healthcare provider, being able to walk up to your uh, AI-based terminal and ask them, give me all the HIPAA violations from today. And, if, and being able to ship you that. That's reality. All right, all right. Who's got a jump ball question? Oh, George has got one. 
I got one word for you. Observability. Neither one of you talked about this. That's the number one problem with AI. How do I trust AI to protect my company when I don't know what the fuck it's doing? That's the first thing I said was correlated telemetry. I'm gonna let you go first. It's the Rob, first thing you're gonna I go talked first. About in my opening. Billions of telemetry points that we're trying to synthesize. That's observability. That's correlated telemetry. It's applied observability. That's part of it. 15 seconds. The, the corpus, the body of knowledge of AI, which is the foundation model of AI, and that is where the knowledge is coming from. So protecting that, which is what previous uh, uh, fighters talked about, is a very essential to make sure that observability is there. All right. That was actually a pretty awesome fight. So let's vote, okay? We're going to start with Rob Kim. Give it up for Rob Kim. Okay, what do you got for John Shin? I guess they know who won, so nicely done. And the winner is John Shin.